Ooh, what is up you guys and of course as always welcome back to another Valhalla Pokemon League battle of week one this time versus Vimar um, and Brow. Now of course gonna say the real name which of course the Miami Fernapes versus of course the Manila Meganiums. Now from the get-go here we have a lot of, these two teams are very 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 strong in this league they are very very good balance overall and um, a few surprises here the matchup was tough on both of them so they're bringing a bit of a niche Pokemon here both of them actually did that I uh, definitely appreciate that because that means that this game will get that much more interesting due to it. Now, on Vimar's side here, he actually didn't bring two Pokemon that I definitely felt was uh, surprising. We don't see a Mega Charizard X, which is something that he does pack. I should say Lander's Incarnate here that he brings is the, um, um, not the Sheafoss set. I was trying to remember what it's called, the, the Sandford set instead. Um, the other Pokemon here I was surprised about was the Silvali didn't make it. I do believe Silvali Fairy would have been an interesting pick for this, or even Silvali Ice. So, not seeing it, kind of surprising, though at the same time, we see Road of a Fan, which I do believe is an excellent Pokemon for this very matchup. Now, with that said, Brawl also has a threat on his team that didn't make it. Um, first come to mind here when it comes to his team was that we don't see Espeon. I think Espeon was very, very scary for this matchup. Uh, not seeing it coming, yeah, that's kind of surprising. Same with Scissor here. Scissor could be, uh, the Bandit variant could be very scary as a whole. And since Charizard X didn't make it, uh, it would have been that much more threatening for me, Vimar, to deal with. Uh, but without, of course, that in mind, let's, of course, go into the match itself. Now, as you guys see in the team preview here, we see Pilos Mine, Rotom Fan, Landris, Superior, Kubelion, and Tapu Fini on Vimar's side. While, of course, there's a Brawl, we have Gyarados, Lodios, Galvantula. Arcanine, Porygon 2, and Gliscor. So Brawl definitely took the more defensive approach here. Porygon 2, Gliscor, very tough combo to break, while the defensive side on Vimar is Fini, Rotom Fan, and Pilloswine. So there are good defensive shakes here for the battle itself. So it's whether or not which one breaks one's who, because both of these players can break each other's wall really well. Lander is going to be a very, very strong Pokemon here as a whole. And on Brawl's side, I do believe uh, Dragon Dance Gyarados could definitely hurt the team immensely uh, if Tabafini is gone. So with that said, let's quit the match. I'm joining as always. Shouldn't record 6 a.m. in the morning. That's, that's dumb. <laughs> so, yeah. I do believe this game was fairly lengthy. We're actually going to see how many turns it is as we are starting off here, of course. Um, let's see. Brawl and... All right. Golden Pork. <laughs> nice to be Mark. Uh, great nickname here. And Brawl sends out Jaros. So from the get-go, this is a tough matchup already for Vimar. He kind of needs to get out. Let's see, 27 turns. It's not it's not too slow. It's, it's one of those little more middle middle games. So actually, yeah, he goes direct to Dragon Dance. That's, that's tough. Could we see Free Strike on Pillow Swine, possibly? That's an option, too. Uh, as we see Toxic, all right. Free strike would have been um, it would have been fun. I don't know how much damage it would have done, but that would have been fun. Right, Jarvis is on the timer. This this is a good thing. This is a good thing. Uh, now we only need to bring Tapafini and try to check it as well as he can. That's uh, that's the strongest play I believe. Um, is either that or juggle it and hope we we'll go for Stealth Rocks too. As um, Fini comes in or Fini not, that's probably it's a broken nut. Now I think about it. Hmm. Green and at the same time. So Jaros go for Waterfall. Doesn't necessarily do anything. Now it could have bounced, but the thing is here, if it has bounced, it is still on a timer. And um, Vimar can actually switch into his Rotom fan if that's the case. So I do believe Jaros due to being on timer are not as big as everything anymore, which is really interesting. As he goes back to the golden pork. Uh, that that's gonna stick, isn't it? As we're gonna see, is this C fly? Yeah, this is supersonic sky strike. So this is definitely a good play. As stated here, I think that Rotom fan was the possible better switch in here uh, due to his defensive capabilities. But at the same time, uh, this is this is what it's all about. This is definitely what it's all about. Look at that animation, this flying serpent. Oh dear Jesus, that did a lot though. That Definitely did a lot on the golden pork as um, he goes for Aisha. Right, he sacks it. I probably switch in Fini again um, just to try to keep this thing alive. Um, he definitely needs the stealth rocks. Or stealth rocks is always helpful, clearly. Though, of course, um, 
maybe not that important <laughs> but still you, you kind of want that now jardas is on that timer um he can only go for waterfall here if it goes for bounce he will die while flying i believe um or he could make that play actually has earthquake all right so we get some decent damage out of here um this is probably the reason if you bring dragon dance variant of um uh, what do you call it of jardos you kind of want lumberry over a c move um not the one predates a toxic pillar swine but still that's that's always a factor with these battles you know stuff like that can happen and being able to not set up and be on a timer is very tough you see galvedishla comes in is whether or not it's a stick web or not um you could directly just go for thunder uh, losing of course the um, the poor poor golden pork is definitely going to be unfortunate as uh, he goes directly for thunder Ooh, ooh, it is avoided he avoided it those seven percent kicks in all right it's gonna keep going at it oh, oh, oh okay misses two in a row that's um that's stressful um lander's eye is probably going to be a switch in here um which could galvanically could very well have hidden power eyes actually i think about it so kobelion comes in um still no reason i think not to go for a thunder though it could go for a stone and so gliscor is definitely the smarter defensive check here as um he misses the stone edge, right? So we are a game full of um, full of stellar misses at the moment. Um, now, precisely, I was going to say that Kubelian could very well pack hidden power eyes. It's a decent offensive move for it, uh, since it's a very balanced special attack and attack. So that's that's a very good move and prep on Beamer's side. As um, I'm pretty sure that uh, next hidden power eyes sadly does take out the list score, which is tough. Oh, he has protect though. Brawl comes protected. <laughs> this is good though. Um, I don't know if it's gonna help if we have Swords to switch out, but um, now Glisker can't switch in on Stone Edges again without necessarily need to worry, but Kobelion is definitely shaking and even countering to some extent the, um, the poor Kobelion here. Um, or Kobelion is shaking the Glisker. Um, so with that in mind, here comes Arcanine. Um, well, it goes with Stone Edge though, misses that again. So now we're two for two with the thunders and you know whatnot. We just stay in here. He's gonna try to take the flare blades, and this is this is probably not possible. That's oh, that was tough. Feeny was definitely the switch in there. It would have been a smarter play, I think. Ah, oh, damn it. That's tough, Bimar. That's tough. Uh, so go to Chef Pepin, and as um, yes, there, it is the, not the rock um, or the chef, or is the rock or what do you call it? Forgot again the power in sandstorm, sand force. Damn it! As Porgon too, it's still are switching here. He's gonna trace, of course, the sand force. As um, he goes directly for earthquake, right? So no earth power here. Directly for earthquake is clearly the more offensive stellar move, and it still does a lot. Actually, it does a very fair amount of damage. As uh, he's gonna retaliate with a knockoff, shutting her down. Though Porgon do usually pack the ice beam. Oh, but we see the Yasha. We see the Yasha Berry. What a great response. And this is definitely going to be... Well, Porygon 2 can't take another Equate. There is just no way. Losing that Eviolai really did dent it. As uh, Galiscor clearly is an option here to switch into. I do believe it's very fair. As uh, we probably find out that it, he doesn't... He couldn't have Hidden Power Ice. Uh, Superpower was a tough play to make. I do believe Earthquake was well within the area now after Violite to actually take that away. That said, Gliscor would have been immune to it. Uh, but we see the retaliation in Hidden Power Eyes, and all of a sudden, Gliscor was not a defensive shake for this battle whatsoever. Poor Brawl. Poor Brawl indeed. That was actually really unfortunate. As Galvanishla comes in, and it is definitely going to pack the Hidden Power Eyes. Um, we need to just stay in here yet again. And this is gonna of course annihilate the poor, poor chef Pepin. <laughs> so, alright, it looks like the teams are free falling actually. We kind of do as Rodom comes in. Now, due to Stealth Rocks here, Rodom has a timer on it, basically can't come in and out as much as he wants to. Air Slash is the best optimal play, but Thunder is gonna do a hefty amount of damage onto it. So, that's really unfortunate. Air Slash is definitely not gonna kill. And Galvanishla will very, very well KO the Rotom here next turn. And I don't believe that um, now the boat landers and um, 
with both landers and pillars one gone that this galvanula will do the damage it was designed for and just basically eradicate well Rodon survived though Rodon survived i was i was taking out the i don't know what happened leftovers coming in clutch i was definitely thinking the galvanula could very well <laughs> start kwing things here i don't believe that vimor had a even a good response here so Borgon 2 comes in he's gonna trace of course the levitate which is super helpful against rotom it is not and um smartest player here i think is going for recover as he goes for toxic that's very fair that's very fair indeed very tough actually bring toxic together with cyberfini which has the misty terrain that always can screw you over so very interesting seeing that as um the last months are on VMR's side here are both the Rotom, of course, and the Tapafini. And it's whether or not the Porygon 2 can take them both on, depending on his combination of moves. But Ice Beam should definitely kill the Rotom here. Uh, VMR should have another Pokemon, I think. But, oh, he has Pain Split, though. Oh, he has Pain Split. Oh, hey. That's, um, that's unfortunate. Now, whether I think the Ice Beam still kind of KOs. Um, it is does not. There were no investment there. There's no investment there whatsoever. And it looks like Rotom can actually defensively, to some extent, shake the Porygon too. Uh, you should definitely go for um, offensive move now, hoping for the air slash uh, flincher. I do believe that's the strongest play. Um, so he doesn't get it. That's unfortunate. That would have been a, a very, very lucky series of events. But Pain Split here. More than I, that's that's kind of stellar. That's kind of stellar. As Toxic, I do believe, is going to KO the Porygon here. Um, I can't for the life of me remember what the Pokemon... I do, we do believe I have Latios left uh, on um, on Brawl's side, which can be very dangerous. As Tabafini comes in and Latios does come in here. Um, now, the dangers here is that I do believe if Latios is a spec set, that Psyshock or Thunderbolt could very well KO from this range. So it's whether or not if it's, it's that or not. Uh, as we see, energy ball, whack. That's that's gonna KO. That's no way. That's no way it's taking that. Poor Fini. So Vimar's last Pokemon here is Randy Orton, which is a superior. Okay, what can superior do? It can't do anything with Mr. Train up. Dragon Pulse will not do anything. It will be half the damage. That's. Arcanine is very well wrap up the game from here, depending on its set. Um, it's going to boost its attack, of course. That's going to be very nasty. As it goes for Leaf Storm. And Leaf Storm should do decent indeed. It's whether or not another Leaf Storm is enough to KO. And if it is, that's going to wrap up the game. Um, let's see. So Arcanine goes for Extreme Speed. That's not going to be a KO. As we see Dry... No! 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 Oh, God, no. All right, so that means that Brawl wins the match. The Dragon Pulse, of course, half the damage in the terrain. Uh, Leaf Storm would have been the better play there, or Hidden Power Rock if he packs it. But, yeah, that was... Oh, that is a tough wrap-up. That's a very tough wrap-up. Um, as a whole here, if I would say what are my thoughts about this game, I would say that I think Vimar... Uh, Sack play a bit too early with a lot of his Pokemon. I do believe Tapafini was a good switch in for most of the tougher situation. Um, what I'm trying to say is that Landra's Eye was a very, very dangerous Pokemon indeed throughout this battle. Um, even though it wasn't Scarfed, it would have been able to punish a lot of teams here. And also Piloswine, you don't want to lose that as long as Latios is active. Um, Latios, when you don't only have um, Stab uh, Ice Shot in mind, uh, it could definitely dent Lodios really well and force it out. Uh, and I do believe he did the right amount of plays for Brawl's defensive side. I do believe Brawl offensively played really strong in the beginning. He was defensively shaked early, uh, but he still had two Pokemons in Galvantula and Lodios who could very well get dish out the damage. Gliscor didn't feel his defensive role, and it felt like it didn't need to because every offensive threat on Vimar's side was getting rid of that turn after the defensive shakes were gone so i think brawl had it um had a good luck here when it comes to battle i, I don't say he won by luck but definitely that vimar didn't do the defensive response he needed to brawl definitely fought what was in front of him 
and it paid off immensely here. Brawl really did bring a decent team, relaxed it, it keeping Lajos healthy uh, throughout his wife of was key here. Uh, because it meant that he couldn't get, there was no Pokemon on Vimar's side that couldn't necessarily take it down early or late game. So Brawl definitely preserved his win con very, very long. And uh, of course, it should say that Galvanishla was incredible this match. Missing two funders was tough in the beginning, but as a whole, I think there was that kind of balanced itself out with two misses from Stone Edge on, uh, with Cobalion in mind. So I think. The hacks was fair against one another, though they always are unfortunate because they do change events of the battle. There were two heavy hits, definitely. The, the, of course, Stone Edge miss versus Arcanine could have been immense on uh, the late game here. Uh, and of course, the two funders that was missing definitely made Rotom not as viable as a possible switching at in the mid game. Um, that said, though, I really enjoyed this game. I hope you guys that watched it did that too. And uh, well, I'll see you next video. Until then, of course, take care.